All right. So it's uh, 10 or 2. We're fashionably late. We still have many participants coming in. Um, we have quite a good turnout in today's event. It's a training event. Uh, we have still some people coming in. Uh, so thank you. First of all, thank you all for joining uh, digitally. Uh, we are letting other participants coming in. We have a considerable turnout. Uh, we have more than 60 participants from 20 different countries, uh, representing more than 40 organizations. So it is quite a considerable success. Um, 66, let's see if we can join 71. It's, a, it's, nice, it's an interesting counter. It looks like one of those live shows. I would probably give another couple of minutes before we start officially. Let's see. It's probably now quiet. Here we go, another one, the last one. 68. All right. I guess we can start now. No, here we go. Every time I want to start, there is a new one, but that's good. Here we go. Very good. Well, I think we reached the forum, so we can start probably. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today digitally um, in this uh, training event, in this training webinar. Uh, it is a follow-up to the EDSSI uh, conference and uh, training. EDSSI stands for the European Digital Student Service Infrastructure Project. Um, it is a project that is funded by the European Commission through the uh, Connecting Europe Facility Program. And it is, in fact, an infrastructure, a digital infrastructure project. Um, it's not only an educational project, it's not only for the educational sector, it is really about building the digital infrastructure for the European educational area by 2025. Um, the project uh, boasts an impressive consortium with excellence at academic level, at digital infrastructure level, and the glue that brings together the um, project partners is really the convergence towards a student-centered international mobility experience within the European educational area. Uh, the purpose of the project is really to build interoperability between the students undertaking international mobility, the international relations offices, the IROs of higher education institutions, and the student service providers. Um, it is a project that has culminated in the development of operational tools for these three actors, precisely and more uh, precisely for the higher education institutions and the student service providers for the benefit of the students in an international mobility. The bottom line of the project is really to ensure seamless collaboration between the IROs or the universities and the student service providers so that they can cater to the students' needs and preferences and also making sure that the international mobility experience is a positive one, not only from an academic perspective, but also most importantly for professional development and personal development. As it is well demonstrated that Participating in an international mobility as a student increases the chances of employability, increases the participation into civil and social life, in addition to providing economic opportunities. Um, the purpose today of this uh, meeting, is uh, of this training webinar, is really to share with the participants the insight uh, of the work that has uh, culminated to, into the EDSSI dashboard, which is one of the digital tools that was developed by the project partners specifically for higher education institutions, the IROs, the International Relations Offices, and the student service providers. The ultimate goal of the project is to build a trusted network 
of participants in the equation of international mobility for students within the European education. This is a little bit of an introduction. It was also to allow the uh, late arrivals in the digital room. So we are at full speed at full house. The first, um, uh, before even starting, I wanted to ask all the participants to please rename um, their profile in the Zoom room. Um, preferably making sure that your name on the digital screen corresponds, matches the name that you use for the registration. Um, it would also help, uh, you know, for us, for the bean counting for administrative purposes, but it also helps all the other participants to more clearly uh, identify you, especially when uh, we will engage in uh, this um, interaction. I want to introduce uh, myself, but also the most importantly, the participants to this uh, seminar and those who will be guiding you through the different aspects of the EDSSI facility and dashboard. I would like to start by introducing the Fondazione Indisu. Fondazione Indisu is the uh, Italian foundation tasked with the research and analysis and formula and policy recommendations for anything that relates to the students' um, rights to education and the students' experience at higher education institution level. Um, it is a, an organization in Italy that has been working for the last 15 years on European student card, European student uh, facilitation uh, among international for international mobility. Uh, Fondazione Enviso is represented today by Sara Engomanze and Andrea Baldin, who will have been working uh, for quite some time now on digital integration, the digital infrastructure, but then again, always from the perspective of the um, student, student-centered experience. Um, we also have uh, Nikos Violis from the um, University of Thess Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, a leading organization in the experience of digital transformation in higher education. Nikos is a digitalization enthusiast, and uh, he has um, easy answers to uncomfortable questions, um, let's say, let's put it this way. So we will uh, look forward to hearing from you. We then have a team from University of Porto led by Bruno Pereira, who is uh, behind, who's the front man of the software engineers and the techies who have been developing the technology aspects of this digital integration. Uh, last but not least, we have Aniko representing the European University Foundation, which for us is the glue, uh, is, the, is the balloon making uh, the EDSSI project fly because it really represents and brings together the different stakeholders um, at, across the European educational area in the higher education institution system. Uh, we're also very pleased today. Today is really a, bringing together these participants for this uh, trusted network. Uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce also Silvia Faloretti, also from Enviso, from Nazione Enviso. Sorry, but the, the screen was out, couldn't remember. Um, we also are very pleased to have today uh, two uh, representatives of student service providers. Uh, we have uh, Rita uh, from uh, Educat, uh, that is the agency tasked with following the students from the student's service perspective uh, in uh, different campuses scattered across three or five locations. Um, the great advantage of EDUCAT is that it's not only one, the provision not only of one service, but it's really the whole range of services that a student um, may uh, need to refer to. So it's anything from transportation to social services, from health to hospitality, uh, food uh, and library and sports and everything. So it's really the entire value chain of services that um, students rely upon for their uh, academic experience. 
And then we also have Pierre Enrico Maringoni, who is the CEO of Indomus. Uh, as the name suggests, is a service provider that is focused primarily on the housing and accommodation services for students. Um, we are very grateful for their presence today because the, the point of the, the SSI is really to build the digital loop that brings to or the digital bridge that brings together SSP student service providers and universities. Um, I've done probably too much of talking for, in, uh, for an introduction. We're approaching 1015. So what I would like to do, I would like to introduce again uh, the first panel um, facilitated by Sara in Fondazione Elisu, together with the SSPs, Rita and Pierre Enrico, to, to give us really a sense of what is happening across Europe in terms of student service provision, um, how is the system, uh, is it cohesive, is it predictable, or there are some uh, uneven uh, uh, features of fragmentation in the system. So I would probably leave the floor to Sara. Um, I invite just uh, a few um, uh, in a few recommendations. Uh, this is supposed this is meant to be an open uh, platform for participation and collaboration. I would ask all the participants to use the chat box um, to drop their comments. We are very much interested in hearing from your experiences. We would really like to hear from you if you have questions, doubts, um, and also, most importantly, if you have experiences that you want to share with the others. Um, so feel free to jump in, turn on your video, uh, make yourself visible, raise your hand digitally, use the chat box, and we can um, definitely, um, in, we want to invite all the participants to make their voices heard. This is a participatory type of training uh, seminar. Uh, in, on that note, I stop talking. And Sarah, I leave you the floor. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, Lorenzo, for this introduction. And welcome back to our training. Very briefly, last time during the pre record session, the video that we sent you before uh, this interactive session, I talked more about what are the student service providers and also from the uh, registration form, we saw that there is great interest in knowing more and more about uh, this word. So today I will keep talking more about the student service providers word. Um, also, thanks to the help of Rita Montrone and Pier Enrico Maringoni later on. So last time I said that there are different kinds of student services and that they are important because they play a role contributing to the development of the academic field overall and the quality in higher education. So the social dimension of higher education in Europe is characterized by the provision of student services, such as public financial aid, student housing, dining services, psychological and social counseling services, but also activities for diversity, integration and social inclusion, mental health and well-being, family services and childcare, as well as international cultural and sports activities for students. We saw in the pre record session that uh, such services are crucial for student well being and student success and are thus a core interest of higher education institutions across the continent. And of course, also for students' mobility, that is our focus today, services play a very crucial role in their initial choice and in general in their mobility experience journey that we saw last time. So what we aim for in EDSSI project is precisely to, to try to start building this trusted network that Lorenzo uh, mentioned between uh, international relation officers and student service providers and all the stakeholders involved. And now let me share my screen for a few slides that will help you following what I'm saying, but I promise it won't be too long and uh, boring. <laughs> so. Let me share my screen and I will ask to my colleague to see uh, to tell me if they can see everything clear. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so as I, um, I, I also told you last time that uh, the student service uh, management um, may vary 
um, so um, the, 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 the student service management may vary according to the country we consider because the European higher education area is deeply diverse. The uh, student affairs and uh, services in Europe have evolved over more than 100 years, and it comes as no surprise that there is a great diversity in the ways that these services are organized, funded, and integrated into the higher education area. There are more or less, let's say, three different models for the provision of student services in higher education across Europe. And these three models are the one that you can see from this slide. So the comprehensive student services module or regional public module. Then we have the sectoral student services module and the last one, the university services module. For each of these, I will try to describe shortly the main features, but of course, in reality, these modules are more complex and can also overlap and complement each other, depending on each country's history in higher education and tradition in public social services. So the comprehensive student services module, which is most advanced in France, Germany, Italy, and Norway, um, we have student services that are provided uh, by regional public agencies that offer their services directly to the students of several higher education institutions in one city or region. So we have, for instance, large institutions such as the Centre Régional des Ouvres Universitaires et Scolaires, so the CRUS in France. Then we have the Studentenwerk in Germany. And also in Italy, we have the Interregionale per il diritto allo studio universitario, that is a regional entity for the right to university study in Italy. So in continental Europe, the local or regional agencies unite in a national center or association are based on self-help and they offer services both to students individually and to their, um, to their higher education institution as a public organization. Uh, so in this model, the services provided by public SSPs uh, so as the acronym of student service providers usually include student housing in resident halls at rental levels below the market price, dining services, canteen and cafeterias, for instance, at uh, subsidized prices, but also administration of national public financial aid based on social needs criteria, uh, social and psychological counseling services, cultural activities, and so on and so forth. Then we have the sectoral student services module, which is the second one, very well established in Scandinavia, Austria, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. And different sectoral institutions exist for each type of service. So for instance, there is usually a public national agency for student housing, another one for counseling services, etc. And the last one, a third typology, is the university services module, which is very well known in Eastern European and Anglo-Saxon countries. There is no such comprehensive organization nor sectoral specialization, and the higher education institution itself has to provide most or all the services to its own students, mostly directly on campus. So the services are thus less centralized and often more costly than in the comprehensive services model that we saw. Since um, each uh, higher education institution has to arrange for its own students and sometimes um, entire sectors of services are even outsourced to public or private third parties uh, providers. Probably you can uh, uh, see um, yourself and your institution in those three different modules, or there are others that are not mentioned here that we will be glad to hear from you. So you see the diversity and complexity of student service management in Europe and the need of having somehow a network, um, a network where all the stakeholders communicate constantly one another. Um, so let me stop sharing my screen for now. And what I would like to do here um, is to hear and let you hear um, two um, SSP representatives that can better explain us uh, the wide panorama of SSP word. They are both working in Italy, as Lorenzo said, but you will hear from them how the system with SSPs is articulated and diverse. 
since they have different way of working. So I would like again to welcome Rita Montrone and uh, Pier Enrico Maringoni. Uh, so first of all, thank you both for being here with us today. We will have a thank short you, interview with, uh, with you uh, in order to listen uh, your perspective and point of view. And, um, and also to hear uh, from you um, if you see advantages in working and uh, managing somehow a student in mobility, and also if there are challenges that need to be tackled. Um, and so, first of all, um, I would start with uh, letting you introduce yourselves. Maybe if you can spend a few words on your uh, daily activity at work, the type of services you are managing with international students, since we saw how many student services exist last time, and also uh, we are starting um, understanding how the, these uh, student services word is big. So we would uh, like to uh, hear from you, your experience with international and exchange students. So I don't know who wants to start first, but um, I will leave the floor to you. Maybe Rita. Uh, yeah, okay. lady first. <laughs> lady first. Okay, thank you so much, Sara. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Rita, and uh, as Sara and Lorenzo were saying, I'm here to represent uh, SSP uh, called Educat. Educat is a non-profit foundation entrusted by Università Cattolica to support students to, through different types of action. And all these actions um, decide to, to make the study paid more accessible according to the right to education. Specifically, I'm a cultural mediator and uh, the main aim of my job is to know and uh, to understand student needs and of course, to satisfy those needs through the different types of um, services that we offer. We take care, for example, of scholarship, financial support, food services, housing, sports service, and so many, so many else. Uh, there is a specific reason why Educat decided to support uh, international students, exchange students through this type of service. And it can be explained with the fact that we, as a SSP, we strongly believe in the, in the importance to, to put at the center of our mission the value of the attention to the person. So uh, how, how is this possible? This is possible accepting the fact that supporting students um, only within a, a limit of services is not enough. Students must be considered, first of all, as, uh, as persons, in this case, very young persons, um, who has to be accompanied towards a future in which they themselves, they will create their value with their work, with their professionalism and with their knowledge. So um, this is the main reason why I am at the service of uh, international students. And this is the main reason why Educat decided to put at their service um, different professional roles. So I'm not the only one, there are many, able to take care of those needs who belong to the social and re relational part of life. For example, uh, we also um, uh, offer healthcare assistance, like free generic medical consultation and uh, psychological uh, counseling where professionals are available for, uh, for students for uh, individual therapy meetings. And um, I think that it would be great uh, if all these services, which are no material services, can find their place, uh, um, for example, into the dashboard. No? If all these type of services can be known by students, by exchange students, before they arrive to the, to the country of destination. Um, I don't know, Sarah, if you want, I can explain. No, I will. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for this introduction. And of course, we will continue the, with other questions, the topic that you uh, cover now. So we'll leave the floor to Pien Enrico to uh, introduce shortly himself and uh, again, your activities with uh, international students. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Rita. Um, as uh, Lorenzo said, uh, 
we are a, an operator of uh, <coughs> Indomus is an operator of uh, PBSA and the PBSA stands uh, for Purpose Build uh, Student Accommodation. We are a private operator, uh, also we have uh, uh, our roots, uh, a social uh, mission. As a matter of fact, uh, we were set up uh, a few years ago by Fondazione Cariplo, which is uh, <coughs> the largest, uh, um, uh, the largest uh, foundation uh, in Italy uh, to uh, add to the right uh, of uh, university studies. Um, what uh, we offer in, uh, in a PBSA is uh, actually is a little more than uh, simply an accommodation. We, uh, our service uh, uh, includes uh, the support, welcoming and organizing events uh, to the students. Uh, PBSAs uh, are uh, structures, uh, infrastructures uh, with um, uh, amenities like uh, study rooms, uh, gyms, uh, uh, lounges, uh, cooking lounges, uh, Wi-Fi. We also offer <coughs> housekeeping service. And uh, uh, currently, we are considering to of, uh, teaming up uh, with Endizu for providing also medical service. Uh, our objective uh, is uh, to uh, enrich uh, student uh, academic experience. Uh, and uh, I believe that in this sense, uh, we are instrumental uh, to the reputation uh, of uh, academic institution. Um, personally, uh, I favor <coughs> much uh, the, uh, the presence uh, in uh, our uh, structure of uh, exchange students. At the moment uh, uh, in Milan, um, we have uh, three uh, major, uh, major locations uh, in which uh, um, the presence of exchange students ranges between 35 and 50%. Uh, the more uh, uh, is the international presence, uh, the higher and the more attractive is uh, the environment uh, without, uh, within our, um, our structures. As far as uh, Erasmus, uh, at the moment, out of uh, uh, more than 1,000 uh, guests, uh, we have about uh, 220 uh, Erasmus guests. And um, most of them are uh, either first uh, semester or, uh, or entire academic uh, um, year uh, students. Uh, um, what we lack uh, in some way is the presence of a second semester student, simply uh, because uh, when we receive uh, the applications, uh, we are already fully booked. In this sense, uh, the coordination uh, made it uh, uh, possible by uh, the announcement of uh, digital infrastructures uh, through uh, EDSSI uh, could be instrumental. And uh, therefore, I'm looking forward for these, uh, for these improvements. Yeah, so thank you um, also to, to Pierre Enrico. Um, it's nice to, to, to see also that in one, uh, in one country, even in one city, in Milano, we are talking about there is uh, such a diversity. I mean, we saw that. Uh, I mean, the um, Educat institution represented here by Rita is uh, somehow embedded on the university, uh, and another one that is a private one. So we can see different realities. And I just want to highlight a point that uh, raised Pier Enrico here on the reputation of uh, university. Because as we said, services play a role in the students' in mobility uh, journey. And of course, if the students have a good experience in a university while they are abroad, they would give a positive feedback to their university mates. And this is um, something very, uh, I mean, very useful to encourage more and more students to, uh, to, 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 to live this experience. Um, now, um, if we focus even more, I mean, Pierre Enrico, somehow you already said something about uh, a challenge that you were mentioning uh, the, uh, the, the problem related to the second semester. But again, if we focus even more on students in international mobility, you as student service providers, do you see it as an opportunity? Um, to work and to have more and more students in mobility uh, on your 
um, on your institutions? And um, if so, do you see also any challenge on doing that? Uh, because it's also important, uh, because it's nice to see, yes, I would like to have more international students, but at the same time, we have to see the reality of the fact, and we have to, somehow we are here to, to think about uh, the challenges and how to tackle them. So um, I don't know if, um, who wants to start? I don't know, Pierre, Pierre yeah. uh, Enrico, if you want to continue what you already anticipated. Um, yeah. Um... No, I don't see major challenges uh, because, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, uh, exchange students uh, are a value added uh, uh, to the environment uh, of uh, other students. Uh, in my view, uh, the ideal situation would be that uh, international students uh, are more than 50% uh, in each uh, hall of residences and ideally are represented uh, by many countries. So that would be a great, a great environment where uh, really students uh, can have uh, enrichment opportunities uh, complementary to, uh, to uh, the academic uh, studies. Um, clearly, um, we have uh, to, to pay sometimes a special attention to them. Uh, obviously, the language is an issue, but uh, uh, English uh, is for sure a standard. Uh, what, uh, uh, as I said, what uh, uh, we pay attention, especially in the first uh, weeks uh, of their staying, uh, is to, to provide them uh, logistic information. Uh, to we have, for instance, a QR code that tells them tells them uh, all the uh, let's say uh, facilities uh, and uh, what uh, uh, and the first aid uh, um, uh, let's say um, say the spots uh, to 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 which uh, they can refer. Um, uh, Going, so you see I mean, it as an opportunity somehow. Yes, but certainly, it is an opportunity. Uh, but clearly, in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, more advanced uh, uh, services to support them, them cooperation uh, with institutions like uh, the one uh, 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 the Educat, uh, which is represented by Rita, is, uh, is an effort uh, opportunity for us uh, because uh, clearly, uh, like uh, counseling uh, or, uh, or 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 let's say psychological support uh, may be uh, needed sometimes. And uh, this is uh, the trend. So basically but more than, uh, than uh, initial, uh, initial uh, uh, welcoming, uh, more and more uh, these students uh, must be supported by uh, more sophisticated services. And, uh, but uh, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. uh, but you mentioned also the problem, not the problem, but the issue related to the second semester, that there is somehow a lack of organization or communication, maybe with international relation offices, and you cannot organize and plan in advance how many students you're going to have in the first semester and how many students you're going to have in the second semester. And this can be, I won't be rude and say challenge, but somehow like an issue, right? That uh, if we have a more, uh, a clear communication or a better organization and this trusted network that we mentioned before maybe it can somehow solve the problem because you you will know okay i'm going to have this number of students in the second semester so it's better for a private entity that of course has to see also its profit i would say uh, so it's also good to have a better organization what do you think about is it hey, uh, i think that um, you know uh... Uh, fortunately for us and unfortunately for the students, uh, uh, talking about Milan, but I think that is, is a similar situation for uh, most uh, of uh, European countries, the offer of, uh, uh, of uh, PBSAs uh, is uh, short vis-a-vis -vis the demand. Therefore, uh, therefore, um, in order to accommodate uh, uh, international students, uh, it, will be, it will be a key, uh, and uh, that will be one of my ideal uh, world, uh, world, world, to have a good uh, communication. Uh, 
between us uh, and uh, higher rows uh, of uh, HEIs uh, uh, so mm -hmm. that uh, we can keep uh, the spots available uh, for the students. I repeat, uh, the willingness is very high because uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, a strong advocate of the fact that uh, international students uh, improve uh, the quality of our service. So we are really keen uh, to find uh, ways uh, to increase the, 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 the component of exchange students. Yeah, thank you, Pierre. Um, Rita, would you like to add something on that? I mean, um, do you see um, international students as uh, an opportunity? And also if in your daily work, um, you face some issues or challenges as uh, the one mentioned by Pierre Enrico? Actually, I totally agree with uh, what Pierre Enrico just said. And uh, concerning my point of view, I see exchange students to be both uh, an opportunity and a challenge. But actually, even when I say that they are a challenge, I say that I use this word challenge uh, still as an opportunity. I mean, I consider international students as a uh, challenge uh, essentially because of one reason. The fact that they have high expectations and high expectation put um, uh, SSP in front of the necessity to do its best to support students and uh, working hard to improve its service day by day. And this makes it the challenge to be an opportunity because this is a very, um, I think it is a very hard and beautiful ch challenge at the same time for SSP taking care of the services for, uh, for international students. And um, I strongly believe that international exchange students represent a wonderful opportunity for ISSP, uh, and not only for us, but also for local students uh, um, that through our services can enter in, in contact with them. I see cultural differences as a very valuable research. Um, and I believe that getting contact with people who are different from us because of the uh, their language, their culture, their religion, and so on, is so an opportunity to grow for everybody and so even for uh, SSP. And uh, I can explain which is exactly my experience with uh, international students. And um, um, right now, uh, as educators here in Rome, we are managing four different uh, residences dedicated to um, international students for more or less uh, more than 100 students and uh, what we used to do is always be sure that we leave some uh, free spaces for, uh, for uh, local students who want to have an experience um, with uh, other international, uh, international students. Um, concerning me personally, I take care of them from uh, uh, their first contact with us, from the, from the moment that, that we receive their request to be admitted in uh, one of our dorm, one of our residence, till the moment they, they have to leave. And um, according to my experience, I, I realized something, the fact that no matter uh, how much you feel to be prepared to go to study abroad, I mean, you can be prepared for sure, you are prepared for sure, you are open mind or you could never decide to do this type of um, experience. But no matter this, um, this doesn't change the fact that the first impact with another culture can be very hard. And uh, usually the first uh, feeling that students experience is a sense of loneliness. And this is the reason why, as I was saying before, it is important that uh, students are welcomed by professional roles who are there for them um, and uh, who are able to let them know that actually they are not alone. So I think that concerning them, the relationship with the IOs is very, very important a good communication because if they are able to, uh, to explain before the arrival of the students to the country of destination, if they are able to explain them that there are also these services and that we are there from them, uh, I think it is, uh, yeah, it's great. It can, it can help them taking their decision. Yeah. 
Thank you, Rita, and thank you, Pianarico, for this lovely chat with you, for your comments and perspectives. I hope that also our, uh, for our audience, it has been an occasion to hear from them and uh, to have something more tangible and not just uh, theoretical. So I would uh, leave the floor to uh, back to Lorenzo for uh, yes. continuing with our... Uh, th thank you, Sara. Thank you, Rita and Pianarico. I think this was a very interesting perspective. Um, if I can just extract a couple of inputs or a couple of takeaways, I really like the uh, picture that Sarah provided. There is a high degree of fragmentation. Uh, not all countries follow the same system, even within the countries or the member states. The member states and the member states of the European educational area, we have regional fragmentation. So it's very common to have different universities using different systems, different methods, et cetera. And so one way to overcome this, this fragmentation is to build a system or, or a tool like our dashboard that can be used irrespective of the place where you are, irrespective of the nature of the SSP, whether you're public, private, small, large, uh, rural, urban, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also want to thank both uh, Rita Montrone and Federico Manelloni we have different perspectives. We have a very focused private for profit uh, service provider. And then we have a more educational in house um, uh, system for service provision. Irrespective of the nature of the SSP, I really like the couple of elements of the social mission. It is within the provision of services, let it be a cafeteria, a library, or a dorm where the experience of international mobility really takes place from a personal perspective. Uh, I really like the word integration that Rita mentioned. Um, and then also another element that Pianodico made very clear is about reputation, reputation for the universities. Know your service providers, know your students, know your, um, your element. And also, Rita mentioned that good communication is key throughout the process. Good communication between the higher education institutions, the student service provider, the students themselves. I also want to thank uh, one of the participants from the University of Cantabria, Agueda Sanchez. We have been exchanging chats. She popped up and said, oh, but we have a very seamless and streamlined interaction and collaboration with our local authorities. Uh, local government, uh, we are able to provide these type of services throughout the cycle of the education and of the academic year. So irrespective of when students come. And uh, again, I want to uh, praise the University of Cantabria. Thank you, Aguena, uh, for your input. And in fact, we have been exchanging chats. And in fact, uh, the, the bottom line of the EDSSI is really to build a trusted network and of course the local authorities are also service providers in some cases they provide social services transportation services and so on so i think uh, we can use this as a as a reference and this is exactly what we would like to hear from uh, everybody your experience and how can the edssi support your experience and bring together these uh, different elements um, of course, one challenge is, all, is always the infrastructure. So really, what model do we use? We saw that there is fragmentation. We know that many universities already have inter-institutional arrangements and agreements, MOUs with service providers. And so I remember when we were in Thessaloniki, hosted by the Aristotle University uh, for the EDSSI conference, um, many people started raising questions uh, saying, okay, is this ADSSI yet another tool that I have to use, etc. And so I would like to leave the floor to Nikos Riolis, again from Thessaloniki University, um, to, to guide us through this process of digital, digital digitalization, digital transformation of universities, and how EDSSI comes into play um, and also give us uh, Nikos, the, the easy answer to uncomfortable questions, which is uh, the reason why we're here today. Thank you, Nikos. The floor to you. Thank you very much, uh, Lorenzo. I wouldn't go that far and say easy answers to uh, you know, uh, difficult questions, right, I guess. 
we'll try to make it easy. We will try to make it uh, comprehensible to all our colleagues being here. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, if there are some uh, representatives from uh, SSPs, from uh, student service providers, please write your name in the chat to see uh, how many of you are coming from a, an IRO, from an international relations office like uh, AWEDA, uh, and uh, if there are colleagues from SSPs, because it will be interesting. So. Uh, my role here is to uh, try and bridge a little bit the gap because uh, Lorenzo mentioned about the trusted network, which is the network we already have uh, in the uh, Erasmus Without Paper network among higher education institutions. And so we exchange data between us about uh, mobilities, but we have also our very uh, valuable uh, student service providers, which are outside these trusted networks. And so the, uh, the challenge is how we can bring them in and cooperate with them in this trusted way and of course uh, based on this infrastructure so uh lorenzo please allow me to share my screen uh, and present a little bit what i have been uh, already talking about uh, in the uh, in the pre-recorded session so i hope uh, most of you have already seen uh, probably this uh, i hope you see it so the edsi project uh, you see the full screen okay thank you so the DSI project um, uh, wanted to be and wants to be the future of the student service, uh, student mobility infrastructure uh, and providing a unified infrastructure to all academic and non-academic services across Europe with the aim of having a simplified administration, uh, a faster process and uh, a better, of course, uh, mobility uh, experience for all students. Uh, so the challenges that we were facing when we were working on the DCI project uh, is to identify, first of all, uh, student service providers. So how, how are we going to identify? Uh, as Sarah mentioned, there is a quite a fragmentation and diversity, uh, many different models. So how can I identify these student service providers? Then the next uh, challenge for an infrastructure for exchanging data is how we are going to collect information for SSPs. Uh, in a single database, so a single uh, point, a single uh, place that we're going to collect this information, very, very valuable information, and then how we're going to share this information with students. And uh, I see that uh, some colleagues participating have already asked, so how we are going to share this uh, information with students. And so what was the challenge of the DSI project? The solution that we proposed uh, was uh, having an SSP module meaning a section, let's say, a new functionality within the Erasmus dashboard, which is a free uh, web tool that is provided to all the higher education community, uh, and use this module, first of all, and as an SSP inventory, so having all or most SSPs gathered in one place, knowing that there are these trusted SSPs from higher education institutions, and of course, the database of uh, provided services, so information, data that we can share with all colleagues in uh, the EWP network. Uh, so the benefits of this would be, first of all, to have a centralized information on services provided to students. So this means probably less workload uh, for colleagues. I've seen, for example, uh, Agueda's comment that they have a link uh, in their website, you know, information gathering all this, but this is in their website. So it's not probably automatically uh, accessible to all uh, universities. They have to go into their website. So here we have centralized this information for all higher education institutions, for all SSPs. Then we can have targeted support by going students. So this means that students will uh, experience a better student mobility. And uh, of course, uh, we have a trusted, trusted SSPs. So as you probably know, working in the IROs, we usually have uh, four fraud incidents, so we can minimize them and, of course, once again, have a better student mobility for our uh, students. So the questions that are usually raised when we present this uh, is if this module, first of all, is a mandatory one. No, it's not. So it's another functionality that will be available to all colleagues, all IROs, all higher education institutions in the dashboard if you want to you want it and you see an added value you can use it it's not that you have to use it it's a you know an additional feature i would say uh, i also seen a question about the dashboard uh, you know about uh, the problems there might be with managing learning agreements and the institutional agreements in the dashboard this has nothing to do with this it's just an additional functionality 
to gather information about student services. Another question, is this module, will this module allow for direct access to the services? No, the purpose is to gather information about the services, but not currently, not provide access to these services. So the student, for example, or the uh, university will not go into the dashboard and have access and information, uh, access to housing, for example, housing application uh, in uh, France or Germany or Italy or uh, in any other country. So they will just have the information. Uh, sorry, Nikos, or, I raised my hand. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, so sorry. I didn't see it. But I'm uh, sorry, but because we keep seeing only slide one of your presentation. So I don't know if you're uh, presenting other slides. Um, you see what's with ah, slides? Now we see, okay. Because I think okay. the, the, your question, the questions are very, very, uh, uh, very, very legitimate and the okay. answers shed a lot of light. So if you can probably go back to question number one, is this mandatory? And then the answer is no. So, you know, then uh, because we were, keep, we kept seeing only slide one. Okay, That's for some reason, for, it didn't sorry to bother you with that. Change, no, just, does it change now? Or you just keep seeing? No, there is just questions raised. Okay. If we are on slide, we see slide six on the questions raised. You see okay, now the now second. number seven, okay. perfect. Sorry, yeah. there were more slides before that, but uh, thankfully no, for, okay. you know. But for, for now that we jumped into the, into the difficult questions, I want yeah, to make yeah, yeah. sure that we have so, to, the slides okay. Are. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Lorenzo, for highlighting. Uh, I didn't uh, realize that uh, the slide so didn't go on. So the questions that are raised based on this are, first of all, as I said, the, is 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 the obligatory is uh, mandatory? No, it's on a voluntary basis. It's for uh, all of you to make use of this additional functionality. Uh, the direct access to the services. Once again not about direct access it's about providing information for services that are available uh, in your university in your region in general because it's not only for uh, student service providers that are higher education institutions it's also for uh, student service pro uh, student services that are provided by external non-academic let's say non-higher education institution uh, providers the next question you are working in Nairo, you already have exchanged interinstitutional agreements with your partner universities. So you wonder, isn't all this information already enough? The SSP module provides detailed information, additional information, uh, you know, on top of what you already have in the interinstitutional agreement, and also provides the possibility to non higher education SSPs to register their information there. So in the interinstitutional agreement, you might have a very small set of uh, data about housing, about services. Now you have a more, let's say, comprehensive and uh, broader uh, 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 registry for this kind of uh, services. Uh, we have already this question at the workshop uh, during the EDSI conference, whether this module will be able to be connected to a mobility software. For the time being, unfortunately, it's not possible, but of course, an API, a connector, let's say, could be developed in the future in order to uh, automatically, let's say, um, uh, have this information in your uh, third, uh, uh, third party mobility software uh, as well. Uh, and probably the last question, I think it's uh, whether why we have uh, chosen to develop this module in the dashboard and not somewhere else in a new platform or in you know, in the mobility tool plus probably some might wonder the erasmus dashboard is the only platform that is accessible to all higher education institutions uh free of costs and so it's the best getaway for non-higher education institutions into uh, the entrusted uh, erasmus without paper network and you can see here that we have granted for the time being because EWP network is a trusted network. We have granted access and control to higher education institutions to invite SSPs. So when you will invite, if you make use of this module, the SSP that you will invite will be entrusted. So once I see an SSP in this uh, uh, registry, let's say, then I can I know that it's a trusted SSP because it's a trusted partner of my trusted partners. So the trust grows 
and it's expanded to uh, all over the network and also to uh, SSPs. So this is uh, from my side. I hope that it was uh, easy answers <laughs> to hard questions. Uh, and I will stop uh, sharing my presentation. So Thank any you, questions? Nicole. I think um, uh, I cannot see the faces of the participants, but I am sure that your answers um, shed light on many questions, even questions that would probably not be very um, straightforward, let's put it this way, or something that you passively listen and say, oh, this is an interesting one, and then you put it back, you go back to your office, you tell your colleagues, and they say, oh, but we already have another platform, or oh, we already have another element. Um, one element here that is very important, uh, and this is why we're here today, is to understand what EDSSI dashboard is, how can it be used, what, what's in it for you, what's in it for you, the IROs, and what's in it for you, the SSPs, uh, how this can be useful as a useful means of communication and collection and connection. Um, always considering that we want um, to ensure the social mission of service provision, we want to streamline the international mobility, we want to enhance the reputation of places, of locations, of, of cities, of universities, and service, provi service providers. Um, either where you, you go to Thessaloniki or Cantabria uh, to visit Aguera. So thank you again, University of Cantabria. This is an invitation to all of you uh, to speak up to, or if you're too shy to speak up, just write in the, in the, in the chat box next to, next to your screen. Um, this is a very interesting transition because I think that many universities around uh, this digital room um, have gathered a sense of how this EDSSI dashboard really is meant to be a facilitation tool. Um, in this instance, what I want to share with you is, that is the, I want to share my screen, oops, because I want to first um, show the partners of the EDSSI project. Uh, that's the first element. So you can see we have different universities, foundations at, at different from different countries, uh, the Erasmus Student Network. And also one thing that I wanted to share with you is the architecture. Uh, because Nikos was uh, portraying in a, in a very straightforward and user-friendly or user from the user perspective, the EDSSI dashboard and what it does. But there is a layer of complexity beyond it um, that goes into the technology aspects, that goes into the administrative aspects of how different actors talk to each other. So there is a whole um, um, rational behind the dashboard. There is a whole mission around the EDSSI project, which again, I want to stress again, the funding from the European Commission through the Connecting Europe facility. Uh, this is very important. I want to stress this because all of us around this table are very familiar with the Erasmus Plus, which is the obvious program for universities. But I want to show also the complementarity of um, uh, the complementarity of funding programs of the European Commission. Nikos, I see you raise your hand. Uh, yeah. I, please go a ahead. Very, a very quick, sorry, a very quick, uh, excuse me, correction, I would say, just for the sake of being uh, formally uh, okay. Uh, it's the Erasmus dashboard because EDSSI has doing doing a lot of work in this, but it's you know under the Erasmus front, so do not steal it <laughs> from them. So uh, keeping the Erasmus, Erasmus is our work. first law, as usual. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we are doing a lot of work. Absolutely. Uh, I also want to stress yeah. that, uh, as uh, Sara just mentioned, uh, please drop your questions, drop your comments. Um, the purpose of today is really get to know the, the dashboard, get to know how it works and how it can be used. So this is a nice transition to leave the floor to Bruno Pereira. Again, Bruno is the frontman of a whole team from the different partners. I wanted to show you the project partners to show that this is really a collective effort of different organizations with different competences and experiences in how to facilitate international mobility within the European and national area. 
Bruno, I would leave the floor to you. Uh, I, I would like to use the same metaphor of uh, the, the flight. So you're the captain for the next 20 minutes. It's going to be a short flight. Um, but Bruno, we will uh, will guide us through the elements of the dashboard, uh, what it does, how it works, and um, its uh, intuitive look and layout, because it's really meant to be an operational. Thank you, Bruno. Feel free to share your screen at your convenience. Thank you, Lorenzo, for your words. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, just to just before showing the dashboard itself and providing some demonstrations of the of the operations and functionalities that can be uh, made there, I just wanted to give a quick recap of how it works uh, before jumping in. So I'll just share my screen. Uh, Well, can you see the, the slides? Yes. And the, yes. Okay. So, Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, as 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 mentioned, the dashboard will collect all the information regarding the student services um, uh, that are supported by the institutions and the student service providers uh, services they offer. And how can this information be uh, shared across multiple platforms? And how can the, uh, an IRO um, select which service he wants to represent or add a new service to the dashboard. So this is the diagram that I that uh, uh, kind of demystifies all this process. So here we have an IRO uh, that can select the service in the dashboard in the SSP module. So for example, it can select accommodation and then it chooses the provider. And this provider can be one of two. Oh, sorry, it can be one of two. It can be either external um or Pardon it can be Bruno, can i ask you the the video is fine the sound is a bit uh, uneven so if i can ask you to place the microphone a bit closer right, to the like mouth, this please. can you hear me now better yeah now it's a bit better thank you okay. sorry for the interruption but no. now that you're getting into the hot topic it, i wanted to make sure that everybody knows. no problem no problem so as i was mentioning can either be an external or, or it can be the 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 the, the institution itself representing then what happens is that the, 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 either if you are external SSP or the institution itself, you will be able to insert your services information in the dashboard. So that the, pro, the, the IRO can then later choose, choose it. So the IRO can, store the, can select the service and the provider. So for example, I want to support uh, an accommodation from NDISO, which has these uh, fields and these values. and the dashboard will store this selection. But then how can this uh, selection be used? Well, it can be then later shared across the multiple platforms. I can then I can in the I can in the in the dashboard itself I can select what are what is the visibility of these services if they are uh, only visible across the dashboard, if they are only visible across the WP um, network. Uh, if they are visible in the Erasmus Plus app. So this is kind of the overview of how this process works. And here you can see the diagram that uh, illustrates that whether you are a uh, hey from the dashboard or you are a uh, hey from the EWP network or, or anything, you will consult the dashboard to fetch the information about your service. Now that I have uh, shown this, I'm going to show you the dashboard as it is now. So um this is the dashboard this is the ssp module and as you can see you have a couple of things here so this has two pages the review and the manage the review is where you view the data that you, that you have selected and the manage is where you can add delete and uh, all the management options of the, of the of the ssps so as as you can see here you click first you click that you confirm the terms and conditions and then you can select the service so for now, I'm going to try and add a, an accommodation service that my own university um, provides. So what I will do is I will choose accommodation and I will choose own information. And as you can see, a big list of fields, some are required, some are not, uh, are available for you to uh, input your information. So I will just put some random values. 
yeah bruno sorry the audio is still uh, sort of broken is there any way for you to place i don't know if it's an issue of microphone or position but i also see the audience is reacting can you try to place the microphone differently thank you patricia we are working on it and also because now it's uh, it's really getting into the uh, into the uh, core of of the dashboard. Let's see. Let's do a sound test. We run a sound test, which was nice, of course. This is like when you take your car to the mechanic and it stops having problems. Um, but talking about the dashboard again, I mean, one feature that um, was a common interest, a common a shared vision for the uh, the partners of the EDS society was really to build something totally user friendly, something um, not flashy from an IT perspective, but super streamlined uh, and very user friendly. So let's try again, Bruno. With your can can you hear me now better? Can you hear me better? It's sort of the same thing. I think really it's a more of an issue of placing the microphone in front of your mouth rather than uh, audio settings. Here we go. Let's try now. Now, can you hear me better? No, maybe it's the same. Slightly, but yeah, let's, let's try. Okay, that's great. Let's go for it. Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. No worries. If, if you're having more, more troubles, please let me know. Um, so as I was saying, I'm, I'm going to add an accommodation service that my own university uh, provides. So I will put here some values, for example. Um, I can just, for example, it's a public and it's from Portugal. So, Porto. I'll put uh, I put it to these values. I will not fill the, the optional data and I click add information. And as you can see, I have the, the accommodation inserted, saying that uh, this is an accommodation from this institution, which is mine. This is my account in the dashboard. Contains these details. And I can show the details and delete. Now I'm going to make another scenario in which I will add uh, a canteen from a student service provider. So I wanted to add a canteen from, for example, the, the student service provider. Um, Endizu, for example, I will add a student uh, canteen from Endizu. But if you go to canteen and you choose SSP, which is the external option, you have the list here of SSPs, which contains a de uh, demonstration SSP. It, it does not contain Endizu because Endizu has not been invited yet to the SSP module. So I will demonstrate how it can be used to invite. Um, external SSPs. So I click my SSP and it's not on the list. And I have to put my email, my current email, and the SSP's email so I can send them an invitation. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I will put both my emails so for you to show how what does the provider see and what do I see. I click send email, and if I go here to my email, I will receive, as an SSP, I will receive an invitation. There you go. Just taking a bit longer to load. Let's 
so this is what the what the SSD will see. It will contain the email and it will contain a link in the form of a button and a code. The SSP can click on this button. And okay, for the purposes of testing, it 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 uh, it should have contained a, a name to indicate your email, the one that you received this, and the code where you put the email and the code. But since I already uh, performed this uh, a bit a while ago before joining the the meeting, um, it already has stored my preferences and knows that I have authenticated. But after you put this and it verifies that the code is correct. You can now fill in the contact in the contact details of your SSP. So, for example, I will put that I am Bruno. Data. The same email. It can be from Italy. I can be from I don't know from Milano. Again, I'm just putting random data because this is just for demonstration purposes. And I click submit, and now I am I am accepted in the register in the in the SSP module. So if I go here and I refresh the page, and I choose Canteen SSP, now and these and these will appear on the list. So I can select it, but no services are there because the Ndizu has just registered on the SSP module. It has not put any information regarding their services. Now, the, the way the SSPs can input their services information on the SSP module can be of two ways. It can be either via uh, a user interface that the dashboard will later have, which it does not have right now, or it can be via uh, an API, a service, in which they will send some data and the dashboard will it and store it. And I'm going to exemplify that. I will simulate that in this is going to put information in the, in the SSP module. However, you will not see that because it will be via the API. That's the only functionality that is currently available in the dashboard. So if you give me just one minute so I can put the information about the canteen. Oh. So I just finished inputting, so I'm going to uh, just select another one so I can refresh the list and select Canteen again. And after selecting Endizu, I, you can now see that I have inserted a Canteen from Endizu, which has these details. OK, so I will add that information, which means that now me, Bruno Pereira from institution, um, from institution LV JK API, which was that from this Erasmus code, now supports a canteen from the SSP and ISO, so which contains these details. And finally, to finalize all these demonstrations, I'm going to add now a library from an, an existing SSP. So, for example, we have provider ink right here, which contains already a library, which contains these details, and I can just add information because it already exists. So I don't need to invite the in the SSP model. Now, at this point, which is not yet implemented, this is just a, a demo of the of the SSP module. Now, the the provide the 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 IRO can go here and select. For example, it will have an option here to select the visibility. So it will contain, for example, if you want to make it public or if you want to make it available in the Erasmus app, uh, etc. So this con this already concludes the the demonstration. Uh, this is just an example of, of course of the services that can be implemented in the SSP module, um, and how can the institution uh, choose what services it uh, it provides, it supports. So, uh, so I pass the ball again to Lorenzo.
Thank you, Bruno. I have to say that unfortunately we had a little bit of uh, sound, uh, uneven sound. So we missed uh, the narrative description of what we were saying in the on on the screen. Um, uh, Nikos, I see you have your hand raised already. So come on in with your comments. Yes, uh, just uh, I wanted. To Say comment about you know uh, presenting. Thank you, Bruno, for presenting the the functionalities. I think that even with the sound being so bad, unfortunately, uh, our colleagues get a little bit how it's working. And uh, as soon as it is in production, I uh, very soon they will also have the opportunity to test it themselves and uh, you know uh, uh, experience uh, the functionalities themselves. I just want to mention that. Um, you know, to put things in the right dimension that uh, you see that it's a basic uh, functionality uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, user experience. Uh, and so, on the other hand, it's a very innovative uh, element of uh, the dashboard, the new module. So, uh, it, it goes without saying that since it's going to be for an added value for all colleagues, uh, it's going to be even better and uh, improve. But for the time being, as all you know, solutions, IP solutions in the making are probably a little bit more basic, and then they are advanced and they are improved uh, uh, with, with time. I'm really happy that we managed to have this because it's really an innovation. Uh, it, you know, we have a trusted network with higher education institutions, but this is the first time we try also to accommodate and associate SSPs uh, with this. Uh, functionality. So, and just to, to clarify yeah. that, colleagues. Yeah. This is uh, very interesting because uh, what you mentioned is this is the first step. It's a long process, and in fact, from a technology perspective, we start small to then scale it up, also based on users' experience, functionalities that can be built. Uh, we have uh, very interesting um, uh, inputs from uh, the uh, chat. The first question. I would like to actually, because uh, leave it to you. Um, the first aspect is whether this the, it, it's about interoperability. I think with existing uh, elements. So the first question from the national agency from France, Marie Pierre, uh, is asking us whether this is going to be visible to the students through the Erasmus Plus app. Uh, we also have other questions on uh, the beta version of the dashboard. Uh, operability and so it's I think more of a question of timing and this is probably a question for the EDSSI team at large on when is this dashboard going to be fully operational and we are at the final stage it's a fine tuning but I will leave the floor to Bruno, Sara and uh, Nikos uh, for this um, and, and so if Nikos you want to talk about interoperability uh, Sara or Bruno you want to give us a sense of timing uh, of when this is going to be fully operational. And then we go to Ivana to your question about whether this is going to be available on YouTube. We are recording the event. We are uh, making it available um, to third parties later on. So Nikos, on an interoperability, you may also want yeah. to talk to other about other um, aspects, please. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo. I think, yes, uh, first of all, the the connection, the, the visibility of this data to the Erasmus Plus app, I think it's something that Bruno already mentioned. So higher education institutions will have the opportunity to uh, choose whether this will be public, uh, you know, in the dashboard only or in the Erasmus Plus app. So the, it, this could be feasible. So it, it will be, you know, again, in the control of higher education institutions to make visible this information uh, wherever they believe it's relevant for their students to see this information and for other students to see this information. So I think this covered. If uh, Bruno wants to add something, Bruno, please. Uh, I just uh, wanted to one. add that this configuration is for each service. So one service can be shared, but not the other. You can personalize it. And this is even better because you might want to share housing and not probably uh, restaurant information. So it's, it's in the control of uh, higher education institutions. I want also probably to address also the next question from uh, Alberto uh, Paravicini. Uh, Alberto, to be honest, uh, this is a project that you know that there is an, another consortium, uh, EWP Plus consortium, that is currently dealing with the other functionalities of the dashboard. 
This is why I mentioned and tried to make this distinction from the beginning. So the dashboard is a platform where you can different, have different functionalities. We have uh, additional modules for COVID-19. If you have seen the dashboard, you probably you already know it. We have uh, functionalities for uh, Ukraine support nowadays. Uh, we have the functionality for uh, entering data in the Rasmus Plus app. So although the work is in progress and many, many improvements are being done in the IIAs and the learning agreements uh, aspect, and this is also a work that has been uh, allocated and dedicated. There is a team allocated dedicated to this one. In the meantime, alongside that, we do not stop thinking innovatively and we do not stop introducing new elements. So there are quite different funding lines, I would say. So uh, the effort for this is uh, provided already, is uh, catered in the context of the ADSSI. So it's a deliverable of the project, and this is how it should be done. Uh, so yeah, thank you for your comments. Uh, however, I think, yeah. And Nico, thank you for this clarification. And it's uh, great to see that we have national agencies, Erasmus Plus national agencies, IROs, SSPs, uh, higher education institutions. That's exactly what we wanted. The idea here is that we wanted to build something that really allows for seamless uh, exchange of information and that again, trustworthiness of the people, of the organizations involved in, the, in, this, uh, in this network. Um, the, um, the concept here again is that this is a, 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 it's not yet another tool, yet another, it's a complement that allows to build and bring together. So it's, a, it's really a, a bridge, it's a glue. It's not meant to separate or it's actually really about bringing together. In terms of operativity, uh, the EDSSI project will close uh, at the end of the summer, so by August 31st. Uh, we are, as we mentioned, we are at the latest stage of fine tuning and the fine tuning is happening after the feedback that we receive from users. So in Thessaloniki, we were really testing and simulating, I always mentioned that we were doing flight simulations with uh, pilots and co-pilots. Um, and so by the end of August, the uh, EDSSI dashboard will be out there. Um, the uh, seminars and the recordings will be made uh, available for free without limitations of access and make sure that uh, as many people as possible can uh, rewind and, and can go back to our different sessions. Um, and then again, I always want to make reference to the EDSSI project website, where you can find all the information, all the tools, all the contacts, and everything else out there. Um, this project, the bottom line of this project is enhanced transparency. And so, of course, we are also available as partners individually and collectively as the EDSSI project for all the participants to um, come together. Let me see if I have missed any questions. I don't want to miss any question. Um, is there any more questions around the table or um, anyone who wants to bring into the table their experiences um, the type of activities or the type of services. This would be very interesting for us to hear from you on how do you see the dashboard coming into play in your own operational settings and environments. Nikos. I think, Lorenzo, that I would appreciate even colleagues do not want to uh, pose any questions because I understand that it's new information and they want to digest a little bit uh, what they have just seen. Uh, and uh, heard from us. Just a very quick uh, remark, whether it's a, you know, of an added value, they see something positive in it. So it's good to have this very quick feedback in the chat, probably not questions, but you know, the first impression uh, is always a good thing to know uh, whether it makes sense to them. We had the same questions in the workshop uh, during the conference, as you will know. Uh, so probably a very quick round here as well. There is another question from the audience, still from France, Marie-Pierre. 
Thank you. It's an issue of, uh, it's a question of about collaboration with the ESC, the European Student Card collaboration and the NTT data. Um, on this one, uh, I don't want to spoil the answer, but as I was mentioning, the, many of the partners of the EBSSI project have already been pioneering and working on the European student car for many years. Um, so this is something that is already by design embedded in the, in the genetics of the EBSSI. Uh, there is a cross-contamination and cross-fertilization uh, between these different uh, elements. In fact, um, and uh, I would like to go again into the sharing the screen. Um, you should see my screen, and this is the EBSSI project uh, website. When you go under the building blocks, and you will see that this is really the purpose of our project, it is consolidating, so building on experiences from the past, and most importantly, integrating and building on interoperability between these all different uh, elements. And as you can see, the ESC is, is probably the first one. Uh, we have also all these different initiatives. Um, I, I want to remind all the partners, uh, all the people in this uh, digital room that, again, this is not uh, a project to provide a headache to the users. We want to provide solutions. And so one of these solutions is exactly this interoperability. So I hope I answered uh, the collaboration aspects, but of course, uh, Sara, Andrea, Bruno, and Nikos, of course, if you feel free to jump in and, and also give us some insights of how this collaboration has turned into an operational opportunity for EBSSI. Lorenzo, if I may, just to add something to what you already mentioned and presented, that this is correct. We, the, we do not collaborate with the consortium itself. However, the main stakeholders of this consortium, being the CNUS, uh, is a major uh, partner, SSP, in our project as well. Uh, I, you know, so I, I think that you know, the collaboration is in the genetics, as you said, of the project itself. It's a, it's a building block based on their uh, European student card project itself. Uh, on the other hand, for this specific module, there was not so much an interaction because the European student card was uh, uh, was a focal point in the authentication part of this project of EDSSI. So not so much into this because you, all, as you all know, and Marie Pierre probably knows uh, better than me as well that uh, Erasmus student card is about. Uh, getting access to student services in the in campus usually. So here, what we're trying to do is to get a step further, and so uh, have external SSPs uh, as well as 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 a, as a registry, let's say, as an inventory. Uh, uh, then, based on this, probably uh, at some point in the future, also uh, the the student card, the European student card project, can also make uh, make use of this. Um, uh, this work and uh, extend it, but for the time being, and as you said, the project ends in August, so uh, there is not much time to do uh, even more on this uh, aspect. Yeah, I would say that there is uh, so many complementarities between the EDSSI. I wouldn't look at, and this is one thing that I also want to share with the national agencies and the universities around this table. This is more really about continuity. So for instance, there is already an EDSSI2 project uh, running, which builds on the lessons learned from EDSSI, although the EDSSI2 is not a repeater in itself. It's a, more of a, an expanding or widening. Um, contaminations and cross-fertilization cross with other initiatives are also um, sort of enforced, if you pass me the term, by the natural um, by the nature of the organizations involved. Just to give you a sense of about NDSU, NDSU is also an associated partner or a full partner in many other projects that evolve around the ESC. Uh, one of those is the ESC extension, so how to extend the adoption and the use of the ESC card. So we really look at the EDSSI not as a mutually exclusive element, 
besides really as a complement. And this is something that we see at Fondazione Indisu, and I'm sure that we see it also uh, at the European University Foundation. We're also very proud that we have the demand side, in a sense, which is the students who go into international mobility and the supply side, so the SSPs and the European University Foundation. So represented really at macro level by the umbrella organizations, by the federations at European level more than European because in fact they represent the whole European um, educational area. So we, again, this is something that I want to share with all the participants. And I see that we have so many countries uh, represented. I see it from the list of registration. I see it also from the names coming up and popping up here in the, in the chat box, in the participant list. Um, this is really about building and reinforcing pan-European networks and the EDSSI dashboard is one uh, element of the puzzle. It is built as an open infrastructure so that everybody can come in and work together. Um, I would like to invite all the participants to uh, digest, reflect, uh, always get back to us through the website and through the contacts list. Now you know where we live. Uh, so we have seen, you have seen our faces, you, you have seen our website, um, and we look at it, the project ends on August 31st, but EDSSI dashboard is meant to be uh, surviving the project. And actually we, uh, the, the follow-up um, after the project is really to promote the adoption of the EDSSI dashboard to make sure that it's a tool that is used across the European educational area. Um, I invite all of the participants to come in, share their experiences, share their concerns, if any, or doubts, uh, if any, uh, with the understanding that with the end of the seminar, we don't end our activities. Um, I think, Sara, we are also organizing a forum with the SSPs um, scheduled for um later on mm -hmm. um and um if anyone has uh, yes a clarification right the erasmus dashboard enhanced under the EDSSI project that's a very uh very important clarification to be made not to be lost in semantics and uh, and definitions um if you want to uh, I'm, I'm uh trying to get a glimpse of um if anyone is, is raising their digital hands or or not, um, if there are no more questions, uh, suggestions, or experiences that you would like to share, um, I think that we can probably close the. Ah, oh, here we go. Um, yes, this is just from my side. It, it's just one more last request uh, to to all of you to please um, add your name when you when you go to your name on the participants list you can uh, rename yourself because i see many names on the list that i will not uh, be able to match with the registrations and from the administrative point of view it is really really important that i can see your name Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. So just how Lucia did it in one second, I'd like to give you a few more seconds in the end to, to, to give you time to do this uh, very quickly. So you just uh, go to your name and you, you rewrite it to the name that is uh, on the registration. Uh, it is nothing uh, to, um, to harass you. It's just to really make sure that we know uh, how many uh, participants we had, and then we can match that with the registration list. Yes, Aniko, thank you. This is a, uh, we know that everybody in this digital room understands the administrative part implied in it. So we ask you for a, a slight. Uh, uh, collaboration, uh, if you can, again, go into your, uh, there is, if you go into your own box, there is three dots on the top right, 
um, corner and then you click in it and you go to rename and you can rename yourself not with your um, fancy nickname that you probably used when you first signed up in Zoom. And if you can put the name uh, that you use for the registration, this is going to help us in uh, making sure that we can uh, compare notes between the uh, enrollments, the registrations, and the actual participants. As you all know, we all participate in uh, EU funded projects. This is going to help us in our admin um, procedures. Um, again, uh, I, I see many, many names that sound like the real ones, <laughs> Nicole. Hopefully, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's happening. Um, yes, I see. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Again, uh, this is a reminder. I want to share again the, the uh, website of the project. The URL is edssi.eu. And this is really uh, the digital window to the project. And this is where you can find all the information that we discussed today. All the, it's the gateway to the EDSSI project, the partners, the consortium, the, um, the digital infrastructure, the architecture of EDSSI. And I think that when you go into the printout of the architecture, you can find yourself as a key element of this large architecture. And the EDSSI dashboard is really meant to be a digital bridge to build this network of trusted participants um, to facilitate international mobility within the European educational area. I just realized uh, that I had many flyers behind me about Erasmus and about the 60 years of, uh, um, and, and it's a by accident, because it's a typical uh, conference room in our office. Um, but again, I'm, I'm really grateful to all the participants. Um, I'm really grateful to all the partners. Again, EDSSI is not a one person or one organization show. This was a collective effort of many partners with different experiences and competences that joined forces. And uh, for, for those of us who were in uh, behind the scenes in, over the months, of this project, we really saw that the great value of this consortium was bringing together different organizations that see the same international mobility from different perspectives and different angles. I would stop here. I would like to thank all the participants, starting with Rita Montrone and Pier Enrico Maringoni from Educat and Indomus, respectively. They are the service providers, the student service providers. And so they are um, the, the people that sometimes we praise or sometimes we detest, depending on how the experience went. And I'm sure Pierre Rico and Rita, you probably have the same feeling for IROs and higher education institutions. Uh, the idea is really that the EDSSI is a digital dashboard to make sure that these two blocks speak uh, more directly, more seamlessly to the benefit of students in international mobility. I also want to thank all the panelists, starting with Sara from Fondazione Indisu, together with Silvia Valoretti, as well as Aniko from the European University Foundation, and then the gentleman Bruno Pereira from the University of Porto and his entire team on the IT side. Uh, Nikos uh, Lipios for his enthusiasm and, uh, and, the, and the funny questions and the mastermind Andrea Baldin from Fondazione Lisu, who has been uh, uh, suspiciously silent but because he, he thinks a lot and so he will give us his feedback uh, later on. Uh, it has been great having you all from all different corners of Europe. Stay tuned. Uh, there is more to come on uh, EDSSI and ED ESSI2 and all the other projects that we have running on uh, European student card, my identity, et cetera. It's really building the digital uh, twist to all of this uh, happening. Um, I don't know, Sara or Aniko, if you want to wrap up uh, the meeting. I thank you all and um, I wish you a very pleasant continuation of the day and the week. I know that we're all busy with wrapping up the academic years. So I let you go.
uh, the recording for the benefit of your colleagues will be made available online without limitations of access and, uh, and credentials. So we really like uh, liked having you and um, we wish you a great continuation of the week. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your patience and thank you to the speakers. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.